Hello, I'm Yannick Kotzech and I present you our work Learning to Avoid Poor Images, where we take the first steps towards online task-aware trajectories for cone beam computer tomography. If we look into today's operating theaters, we see a wide range of imaging modalities. Ultrasound, MRI or CT, just to name a few. But what all of these have in common is that they are task agnostic or medical grade cameras. This means that the user, usually the surgeon, chooses all the imaging parameters and changing those parameters requires interaction. We need to tune the acquisition parameters as we know that with respect to every procedure, there exist images that carry more or less useful information and selecting the most suitable ones is crucial for success. Therefore, if we are able to automate this process and automatically can acquire the images most useful for the procedure at hand, we have the potential to optimize clinical workflow and get a reproducible better image quality. Looking into this problem, we see a lot of open questions. How to define optimality with respect to a procedure, how to handle many degrees of freedom, and how to include user perception, as in the end the surgeon has to work with the images. While this cannot be answered in general, we can answer some of those questions for cone beam computer tomography. CBCT is a well understood imaging modality and it's useful in clinical practice because it can be used to verify surgical outcome. Furthermore, more and more robotic CBCT systems are installed in operating rooms. Still, CBCT is not widely adopted due to the compromises in workflow that are not met by the image quality. For example, if one needs to verify the placement of those pedicle screws, that's just not possible due to all the metal artifact in the image. This is a very general problem, as surgical verification means verifying the placement of metal tools in the body. Therefore, if we want to understand the surgery, we need to have the location of those metal tools, and with current CBCT, this is not possible due to the high metal artifact. To reduce those artifacts, we first need to understand where they come from. They arise very early in the pipeline and are mostly data inconsistencies. That means that the assumption made during reconstruction do not cover the full imaging physics with its effects such as beam hardening. Therefore, if we are able to avoid poor images, which are the images that show those artifacts, a better post-inverse problem is created and therefore we get a better reconstruction quality. Looking into CBCT, a classical CBCT scan is acquired on a circular trajectory around the patient, visualized on the left side of the slide, where the phi direction is the direction of movement of the C-arm. The X-ray source therefore moves in a single plane. We now can extend that trajectory by another degree of freedom, the out-of-plane angle theta. By optimizing the out-of-plane angle theta for every acquired ima image, it's possible to acquire better images and therefore reduce this data inconsistency. To acquire optimum images, we propose following pipeline, starting on the upper left side, a robotic C arm acquires X ray projections. Those X ray projections are fed into a machine learning based predictor. The predictor model predicts a task optimality rank for possible future out of plane angles. The best out of plane angle is selected from the predicted task optimality rank, provided back to the scanner. The next X ray projection is acquired and therefore the loop is closed. To define the task optimality rank, we can ask the imaging physics community. 
and we get the non-pre-whitening matched filter observer model. This observer model assigns a value to projective images and is derived from optimality criteria for image quality. It very well matches human performance on detection and localization tasks. This observer model includes information about the task at hand and it optimizes for sampling the task while at the same time minimizing the sampling of noise. Still, even so we now have an observer model, it's not possible to directly apply this to clinics. The observer model requires an annotated 3D volume of the patient for optimization, spatial alignment between this 3D volume, the patient, and the scanner needs to be known, and finally, any preoperative 3D volume does not represent the state of the patient during the surgery as the surgery alters the anatomy. Our question now is if we can predict the task optimality rank for future images just based on the last images we acquired. And yes, with machine learning we're able to do so. So we train a model that takes the last acquired X-ray projection and predicts the task optimality rank for the next possible images. To train such a model, paired data is needed, where 3D volumes together with projections all around the sphere are required. This is a data set that cannot be acquired in practice, therefore all data needs to be simulated. We chose the DeepDRR pipeline, which generates X-ray projections from CT volumes with a realistic model. Starting with the volume, different materials are automatically segmented and annotations for the screw trajectories are provided. Forward projections for different materials are simulated and a physics-based model is used to generate noise and attenuation image and scatter. The DeepDRR model uh, models multispectral sources and thus is able to simulate the artifacts that finally become visible around metal parts. Now we can come back, come back to the slide with our, our proposed pipeline. Starting with the robotic C arm, we get X ray projections. Now we have a trained model. To predict the task optimality rank. The best image can be selected from the task optimality rank. This angle can be fed back to the scanner, the image can be acquired, and the full loop is closed. Coming to experiments, we run the first set of experiments on synthetic data. On the left side, we show the reconstruction from a circular trajectory. On the right side, the reconstruction from a task aware trajectory is visible. The task aware trajectory exhibits much less metal artifacts visible as streaking around the screws. Furthermore, the screw is reconstructed more as a homogeneous object, which fits the actual properties of the screw and therefore shows that the reconstruction quality is better. What matters in the end are results on real data. We therefore built a semi-anthropomorphic phantom from ballistic gel and screws, as shown in the image here. And I want to thank Marike Tees for running all of those experiments. Moving to real data experiments brings some more requirements. Dense sampling around the screw is required and also calibration of all views is needed. In a clinical application, a robotic C-arm can be used to acquire image, images at any location on the sphere, and an online calibration algorithm could be used for calibrating the views. In our experimental setup, we acquire 17 circular scans to simulate sampling of the complete sphere 
and we use rigid registration between the reconstructed 3D volumes from the circular scans to get calibration between all X-ray projections. The left image here shows the acquired trajectories, uh, the acquired circular trajectories on the real data, where the red line indicates the classical trajectory and all the other trajectories are taken to acquire images around the sphere. The right image then shows the recommended trajectory by our algorithm. Using this recommended trajectory, we get following reconstructions. On the left side, again, the circular trajectory. On the right side, the task aware trajectory. The general image quality here is worse than in the simulated results because the scanner is equipped with an image intensifier and therefore delivers a lower image quality. One can see that by using the task aware trajectory, more details of the screw become visible but also the soft tissue contrast increases. Coming to a conclusion, I presented you our first steps towards autonomous task-aware CBCT imaging. The proposed algorithm for trajectory optimization runs online and in real time. By using the last acquired X-ray projection, for predicting and task optimality rank of future images, the algorithm is patient specific. And finally, it integrates well with any existing reconstruction or post-processing algorithm.